Have you ever thought about what the future will look like? Well, I think it's here. What if you could 3D print the things that you would want in your home? Would a 3D printed chair actually be strong enough? Will IKEA just end up a place where you buy a design and then print it yourself? In this video I'll try to answer all of those questions by using this massive 3D printer from Elegoo. It's actually not that expensive. It's absolutely massive though and I did not drop the box down the stairs when carrying it in. There's only one issue. The first thing that happened was that it broke. No. And as I see it, there's one really big caveat with this printer. I'll get to it later, but you might already know what I'm talking about. Just in the past couple of years, there's been so much development in technology, which has made me think about what the future of making will look like. I mean, will we just be able to fabricate whatever we want from home, or will just AI do it for us? Now 3D printers has been around since the 1980s but only became affordable enough for the mainstream market in like 2010. Since then they've become even more mainstream with less maintenance, they've become faster, but what haven't changed much until now has been the size of the printer. Well today we're taking this one step further with this 3D printer from Elegoo. Yes, it is a 3D printer and not a spaceship. But let's start at the beginning of the story. I received an email from Elegoo where they asked, do you want to try our new 3D printer? Now this happens every now and then and normally I don't say yes unless there's some real value in it. But then I read further and it said the printer was able to print 800 by 800 by 1000. That's one meter in height and I thought, I need to try this. So I said yes, not really thinking about the space it would take up or how big the boxes would be. The packages arrived and I got to work on assembly right away. Well, not really. I had to get the boxes inside and that wasn't as easy as I'd hoped. I had to be really creative. I mean, like really, really creative. You don't need a small ATV to get this in your house, but you probably need a friend. As you can see, I have none. And the first box went okay. The second box was heavier though, and unfortunately, The camera wasn't facing me, but I dropped the box and was fighting to get it back up again. After almost giving up and just wait for a new friend, I eventually got it in the house and could start the assembly. Which wasn't easy. Not only do you need space for the boxes, you also need to get the things out of the box and place it somewhere. The total assembly time was around 2 hours, and it wasn't easy doing it all myself, but I did succeed. So it's currently running a calibration. It's gonna take a while because there are a lot of real estate to cover. Uh, then you can actually go in manually changing that, but just look at the size of this thing. It's humongous, it takes up the entire room. Now let's do a really quick rundown of the features of this machine. The actual size of this printer is 110 by 123 but then again you also need room for the filament at the bottom if you're doing the big roll or the small roll in the back actually adds another 24 centimeters to the entire depth of the machine. The print size is 80 by 80 centimeters and one meter in height. It can print up to 300 millimeters a second but the recommended speed is 150 millimeters a second. Comes with a holder for bigger filament, but also for smaller, and they both have a runout sensor. Which means if you run out of filament, it's gonna pause the print. It comes with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, but they also supply with 0 0.4, 0 0.8, and one millimeter nozzle. It comes with one print head, but there's a feature where you can add more and actually print more than one print at the same time. There are some concerns about the nozzle sitting in with only two screws up in the heatsink. And that actually caused a big problem straight away. For some reason, after calibrating, the nozzle just went straight down into the bed when I started the first print and dragged along the bed. That bent the nozzle and I found leaked filament from the factory, a blue filament I've never used. I managed to put it together, but the heat break is actually still broken off inside of the heatsink, which isn't ideal. Which means it's technically broken, but it still prints, but it's not perfect. 
Elegu has since then upgraded the firmware and they're gonna send me a new print head of course. But I wanted to keep printing instead of waiting for that. But the main thing with this printer, it's the size. Just look at my Creality K1 Max in comparison. It's tiny. And that printer can print 300 by 300 by 300 millimeters, which isn't too bad at all considering the size compared to this one. The thing that took up most of my time was definitely getting the bed leveled correctly. They supply you with these steel sheets that you put on top of the print bed, and then you can calibrate all individual screws by adjusting them ever so slightly according to the measurement on screen. While it does help, still it's really hard to get it perfectly leveled. Also, there seem to be some issues with the measuring that I hope they can solve with a future firmware update. And even after leveling, it was really hard to get a good first layer, because it doesn't seem like the nozzle is adapting to the differences in height of the bed. Which I think it should, since it knows where the bed is higher or lower from the bed leveling. But the big obstacle was waiting ahead of me. Because designing furniture for 3D printing isn't the same as designing for woodworking. And it's really hard to overcome all of the rules of woodworking stuck in my head when trying to design for a 3D printer. Joinery doesn't need to be made the same way and instead I would have to consider how to be able to print this chair without using supports. Preferably. Because even though it works with supports, they might leave marks and I am limited to 4 kilos of wooden filament for this chair. So I designed a chair that can be printed in parts taking advantage of the really big surface of this printer and then be assembled. But for reference I imported one of the leg parts in the bamboo slicer and this is the size of one of the legs for this chair. So I started printing the parts for this chair. But before we continue with that chair, there was something else I wanted to try that would definitely be a game changer with a printer this size. So I also designed a stool. A stool has a big advantage, it doesn't have a backrest, which means if I flip it upside down in the slicer for the printer and design it so that the legs don't need supports, I could just print it in one go. And if you can print a stool in one go, that to me is a game changer. The slicer said around 11 hours in total for this print, so I had that print overnight. But I did make sure it got off to a good start. I'll let you take a guess if this will actually hold my weight and I'll tell you what the infill percentage was after the print. But the print didn't go to plan. Oh, man. This is one of the downsides of printing this big while you can't monitor the print. The print failed during the night and since a lot of what you'll be printing will be big and have to run overnight. They probably should have included some kind of sensor to at least give you a warning that something might be wrong, but I don't know. I don't know what caused the print to fail, but I did have a new go at it and that was successful. Kind of. Let's see what we got. Ah, oh, looks good. Let's take it off. Came off easy. I mean, right off the bat, it looks okay, but there's definitely some under extrusion going on as I could see on the legs and also on the absolute bottom. Can I sit on it? That's gonna be the absolute test. So let's try it out. <laughs> I'm a bit scared. What? <laughs> what is this? I can actually sit on it. I can actually sit on the stool I printed. I printed a piece of furniture. How cool is that? Um, it feels kind of solid with the downwards pressure. But it seems like if I, if I wobble like this, I could probably snap the legs off pretty easily. The infill was only 15% and that print took like 12 hours. So if I were to increase the infill, that would probably make it a lot sturdier. But I've only printed this on PLA and PLA isn't the strongest. I could print PETG on this one, but I can't go any further than that in strength wise. So that would need an enclosure. I'm not enclosing this machine. But for prototyping, I would say this is absolutely brilliant. Now back to the chair. 
I got a wood PLA and it contains 40% wood fibers and 60% bio-based PLA. That also means that the parts are easily sandable, or so the manufacturer of the filament says. To prevent stringing and oozing, I had the PLA in a dryer. I don't know if that helps or not, but that was just an extra precaution. There was basically no room for error here. I had 4 kilos of this filament and I couldn't buy more, because it's currently out of stock. But if I succeeded, I had a cool idea on how to actually finish this to make it look more like wood. There is something about the future that scares me, and that's coming from someone who has always embraced new technology. But with this, I am feeling a bit scared. Not only because it's infringing on my current occupation, I mean, if anyone could 3D print a chair, who would hire a woodworker? On the optimistic side of things, I accepted this printer to kind of face my fears a bit as well. Because even though this stool was 3D printed, it's not as good looking as something that would come out of a woodworker's shop. It's not as rigid and it's a bit too light. Which means you would have to increase the density or fill it with something whilst printing, and that would increase the cost as well. Anyway, I think the possibilities with this technology is going to lead us to places we haven't been before. Whether that be printing at home, or maybe it will just open up the world of design and manufacturing to more people. But as I see this, this is a prototyping machine more than anything else. The parts for the chair fortunately printed okay, but there were still some issues with under extrusion on some parts, and also bed adhesion after the print had been going for a while. That was due to me not printing with a brim to hold it down though. But with large prints comes problems with bed adhesion. I printed all of the parts for the chair in just over 3 days, and the filament didn't run out. I actually have quite a lot of it left. When all the parts were printed I went over them with some light sanding, taking out any inaccuracies from the bed not being perfectly leveled, but when I saw it assembled I knew no one would take it for wood, so I went over the entire chair with wood filler, and then I tried Rubio Monocoat Oil Plus 2C Chocolate, and this is not intended for use on 3D prints, but I gave it a try anyways. Like cats aren't supposed to be eaten. I actually never ate a cat. Knowingly, at least. When the chair was all assembled and finished, I tried it out. Sounds like it's gonna break. <laughs> it sounds like it's gonna break. This is such a shitty chair. And it's due to my design, mostly. Like, it broke right off. Right here. Now, the design of the chair and not holding together, that was on me for sure, but the finish, it's not good enough to be able to use this as a chair anyways. This was printed between 15 and 20% infill, but the dovetails were printed at 80%. Still, they're not strong enough for this. Look at the wobble on this thing. Like, it's just waiting to break. Now, of course, there are a bunch of cool ideas you can do with a 3D printer this size, but it's not for everyone. And there's also the caveat that I mentioned earlier that I'll get to soon. So right now I brought the printer into a house we normally use for storage. But when I start renovating this house, I can't get the printer out the door, so I need to disassemble it to get it out. So I suppose there are a couple of things you could use this for. Prototyping furniture, for instance. But also making bigger things like a customized shelf or a trash can. Imagination is the limit. But right now printing furniture that can be used, well, it can do it in some sense. But then there is the big caveat, the price. The price of filament. The wooden filament that I used cost me around $180. And you would get a really decent chair for that money, a wooden one. So honestly, I'm not really sure what to use this for. Printing a normal sized trash can would be more than a kilo of filament. And that just ends up costing more than a trash can in the store. So the main question for this is, when is it actually worth spending money on filament for this thing? What is the project you're gonna make that you could actually use it for? I'm actually more calm about the future now. I would say though, at the price point, you get a lot of 3D printer for your money. There are some issues for Elegoo to solve, but the hardware is actually really good. So I think there is a future for this printer. Now, how do I get this out of my house? 
I'm actually more calm about the future now than before. It's amazing how dropping the phone so many times without ruining it, that's amazing. <laughs>